everyone, and welcome to a Time Shifters podcast, Time Hop Edition. This is your host, Christopher, and I am here, as always, with Tom. Tom, how are you? Not too shabby. Thanks to Strike Media, we have received a screener for a film that is going to be debuting in the UK in limited theaters it's on the 14th of June, and then hitting digital releases on the 1st of July, and this is a film called The Moor. a child. Do you really think Danny's up there on the moor? She's hiding. There is something to find here. I know there is. She's scared. She can't remember. What can't you remember? This place just feels familiar, like I've been here before. She can't remember her mommy and daddy. Ellie, eight, nine, seven. Son. Where's my son? You need to help me now, Dad. Something out here. Something old, terrible. All she remembers is dark. Can you show me your hiding place? This is the feature film directorial debut of Chris Cronin, and it stars uh, Sophia Laporta, David Edward Robertson, Elizabeth Dormer Phillips, and has an appearance of the late Bernard Hill. Claire was just a child when her friend was abducted, never to be seen again. That summer saw dozens of children disappearing from the local community. No trace ever found and all presumed dead. 25 years later, the man convicted of the crimes has served his time and is due to be released. Claire is approached by Bill, the father of her young friend. He has a plan to keep the man behind bars. He's positive that if they search the moor outside of town, they'll find some evidence that could prove the children's fate and keep the man in prison. He takes Claire deep into the haunted moor where they find more than just the ghosts of dead children. Something else, something dark and evil, stirs beneath their feet. I, I watched the trailer on this one uh, before I even requested the uh, the screener for it. Yeah. And we've been drawn in by lots of trailers. Sure. And this one was another one that was like, all right, this looks legit like it could be a little creepy. I'm not sure, you know, is it going to be really a horror? Is it going to be a mystery? You know, what what's it going to be? We got the screener, sat down to watch this thing. And the answer is yes. <laughs> it's it's a horror. It's a thriller. It's a mystery. Uh, it's a little bit of everything. It it very much is. Uh, and I have to say, having watched it, um, while it has lots of elements because it's a little bit of everything, I kind of struggled with it a little bit. Really? Did you? Yeah. Yeah, because uh, when we were solidly on the whole... Um, serial killer slash abductor person uh, notion, which kind of, that was kind of the front load of the movie. Um, I, I, I was into that, although we, we were really weren't getting into the the who's it, what's it uh, uh, of that component. All we knew that somebody was ca- caught and jailed for it. They went to prison. Um, and that they were up for parole, and we needed the evidence, just like you described in the description. So uh, that's all good, but then we take this kind of weird shift in in the middle where our friend Bill, um, who wants to find his son and all that, is going to any length whatsoever to dig this up. So now we shift into something a little more psycho paranormal uh as we do that and i'm like okay so we're on this vibe and all that and and then we actually start involving the more more (laughs) And, (laughs) and, and and now we're shifting into straight up paranormal we're dealing with ghosts or demons it's unclear what we're actually dealing with and because it just kind of it chunked it in three different segments, kind of like that. And I didn't feel like I got a payoff in any of them particularly. It was, oh. uh, 
I, I was struggling with it a little bit more, even though visually and the acting and all that was really spot on. Oh, it's really interesting. I actually really dug the fact that it was a very slow burn mm -hmm. in revealing and getting to the supernatural elements. Sure. I like that it wasn't immediately apparent that we are going to be dealing with supernatural. I like that it started out as just a, a what could have been a really good kind of crime drama. Sure. And then slowly it starts just sprinkling in these elements that you start wondering, well, is it or isn't it? And right. then it's like, oh, it definitely is. Yeah. But but how much? <laughs> and then it just keeps kind of layering on until the end you're in you're in full blown horror mode. And, and I dug that part. It's just because we like like I said, it just kind of it kind of broke it up and, and I didn't feel like it all blended together that well. And because we don't you don't need I don't need everything spoon fed to me, but it's it's unclear what we're finding and in that, I can appreciate, and like I said, I, I enjoyed the watch, but I struggled with some of it because, like I said, I don't need it spoon-fed to me, but what I, I wasn't feeling any satisfaction. Like, when we got into the, the really the, the, the horror part, the supernatural part and all of that, and when they're actually unveiling some of this, it had very much a Blair Witch Project kind of feel to it. Especially since she's just toting around a camera on her chest half the time. And that's how we're seeing a good hunk of some of the stuff. Not not all, but uh, it's how we're seeing a lot, large portion of what happens in The Moor. Um, and, and like in the Blair Witch Project, when it's clear that they're coming across something supernatural, we don't have enough information and there's no like direct interaction with it. This had that feel, and I was like, I wanted a little bit more. I wanted to know what I was experiencing in this moment. I know I'm, like, right there in the mix with the characters, and I think that's the feel they're going for. But there are times, being the movie watcher, you kind of want to rise above and know a little bit more. So okay. that's just kind of where my head was at. Oh, interesting. I have to admit that I was pretty much... Um... I was into it from the from almost uh, minute one. Oh, the opening sequence is amazing. Yeah, it, it, the film, like you, as you said, I mean, it's incredibly well shot. Mm -hmm. It's really great. It, it's a masterful at the use of the um, of the edit as far as like from scene to scene. Yes, uh, there's times where like a a. You're waiting kind of for the jump scare. <laughs> right. You feel like yeah. a jump scare is building, and the jump scare is just the scene changing. <laughs> well, yeah, and, and like you're mentioning in, in the beginning and the slow burn nature of it, you kept expecting something even far more dramatic to happen during the opening sequence. Yeah. The way they would shoot down an alleyway, and you kind of can't make out what's at the other end and all that. You're expecting something... And when nothing comes of it, that's almost as startling as having actually had something jump out at you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Another thing I liked because it was a slow burn. I mean, this was a this is like a two hour film. It is. Yes. The part of me that like really likes the 90 minute film. Yeah. <laughs> the part of the, the, that, that part of me wants to say one more pass through the editor, you know, for the script to tighten it up a little bit. But. Everybody, the the uh, actual actors in this are also really good. Yes. And it, so I feel like that two hours gives everyone plenty of time to do their thing. Especially with this kind of content, um, it can drag out. But I didn't actually feel that. Even with my misgivings from this, I felt it played very well for its duration. No, I, well, it's not like I was sitting there looking at the, at the time, how much longer do I have or anything like that? Because I think it pulls you in mm -hmm. and it doesn't let you go. No. No, it doesn't do that. Uh, that's why I have the hardest time describing this because I, I, I needed a little something more, but I can't entirely put my finger on what I want. And I think it's even funnier that I keep saying the word more, but not the more. <laughs> <laughs> 
and it's also one that's very difficult to talk about because to talk about it too much starts to give it spoiling. Away. Yeah. Yeah. And this is a film where there are so many little minor bits that you think you could mention, but you think, like, Ooh, if I mention that though, yep. that's going to let people know about this. <laughs> and you, you really start going down a really slippery slope of uh, spoiling the film. And so you, you can't, what I will say is I feel like this film sucked you in early and pulls you along and then just spits you out. <laughs> and it's aptly titled because as much as all the actors play their part and they do it very well, um, the more itself is its own character. It moves without moving. Uh, the, the way that they used fog effect and, and all that in this was just amazing. And, and everything about them when they're at the more suggests you want to leave there as soon as possible. <laughs> Yeah. Even though it looks amazing to explore. <laughs> I'd be very interested to know how much of the the fog and the everything, how much of that was physical and what was I mean, did they tinker with it in post? Did they, you know, walk around with the fog machine, you know, and that sort of thing? I'd be very curious cuz that is a very strange seeming place. I mean, I I've always you always hear about the Moors, and usually, you know, it's the, you know, stay off the Moors. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've watched Scooby-Doo enough, you know. <laughs> sure. Nothing usually good ever happens on the Moor, and honestly, I hadn't watched the trailer ahead of time. So, uh, and it being the Moor, I'm like, is this going to be a werewolf movie? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Or, or are we getting banshees or something? Yeah, Hound of the Baskervilles. Yeah. Is, are they going to be pound, you know, bounding through at any moment? I, I at least graced myself with no information going into this. So Nice. Okay, very good. As I said, this is going to be um, releasing in the UK. There, unfortunately, is no current plans for a U.S. release. Fingers crossed yes. that it does come around this side of the of the pond because I'd really like more people to check this out. It's been doing the festival circuit, yeah, and has been doing really well. It's it's been uh, garnering lots of uh, accolades and awards on the festival circuit, and uh, on IMDb, it's it's coming in at like a seven point two or something, which is high for an independent film on I, IMDb. I think yes. And uh, so I haven't seen a whole lot of uh, bad word of mouth on this one yet. So, so far, I think this one could actually do well. I'd like to see this actually make it to the, the theaters. That that would be kind of fun. Uh, at least uh, maybe independent run. Yeah. Like, like the art theaters and such. I think this could do well in those. No, absolutely. Um, but if you get a chance to check out the more, please do. Yes. If you, if you do love to hear your thoughts on it, send us an email, timeshifterspodcast at gmail.com. Follow the link in the show notes to all the social media sites. Let us know you watched it and where. And, uh, yeah, give us an idea of what you thought of the more. I, uh, Tom and I, I, I think while you, you have some reservations on it, I still think you would give it a recommendation. Oh, no, absolutely. I think you should give it a watch just because uh, I had some drawbacks doesn't mean... It doesn't take away from it's still a, a spectacle that one should take up. Yeah, absolutely. So our, our advice is to actually s to go on to the more. <laughs> <laughs> just, just make sure you find your way back. Yeah, take a good guide, maybe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, well, that'll be it for the, for the more. Go and check it out, and we'll be back in a week with a full episode. Thanks for listening, everyone. Bye. See ya. <laughs>